Peace and love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Certified School Psychologist, Certified School Principal, Pan-Africanist, author of the book, Psychoacademic Holocaust, The Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys. I'm joining you tonight from Elizabeth, New Jersey, just outside of Newark, where I will be speaking tomorrow here in Elizabeth, New Jersey on Saturday, December the 10th at the Mickey Walker Community Center, 860 Honor Street. Again, tomorrow, Dr. Umar Johnson will be speaking here in Elizabeth, New Jersey at the Mickey Walker Community Center, located at 860 Honor Street. That's 860 Honor, A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, 860 Honor Street. You can get tickets at the door. Please bring the children, bring the elders. Whenever there's a Dr. Umar Johnson event, everyone is invited. So, I am here. Just got finished speaking to one of the basketball players from the Fighting Iris University of Notre Dame. They are in town, and they will be playing against none other than the defending national champions, the Villanova Wildcats. Shout out to Philadelphia. Okay, of course, good luck to the brothers from Notre Dame. We're staying here at the same hotel. We're on the same floor. The Notre Dame basketball team and Dr. Umar Johnson, and they'll be going up against my hometown team tomorrow, the defending national champions, the Villanova Wildcats. Philadelphia has the titles. We got the champion of black consciousness. We got the division one champion, uh, Villanova Wildcats. We working on the sixes. We working on the flyers. We're working on the Phillies. And, we're working on the Eagles, all right? But anyhow, brothers and sisters, I have Elizabeth tomorrow, and then on Sunday, Sunday I will be speaking in Queens, New York for the first time in about four years. Queens, New York City, Sunday, December the 11th at the Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Again, the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Black America's number one most requested scholar orator We'll be speaking in Elizabeth, New Jersey tomorrow, December the 10th, and on Sunday in Queens, New York City at the Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Both events are at 3 o'clock. Doors open up at 2. Both events are at 3 o'clock. Doors open up at 2. Tickets can be earned at the door. And then I will begin my Kwanzaa tour. I have a two week break to take care of some administrative things for the National Independent Black Parent Association, some administrative things with the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy School Search and Fundraiser, and some administrative things for the Unapologetically African Second Annual Black College and Consciousness Tour for 11 to 17 year old boys and girls. Okay, but the Kwanzaa tour will begin in Baltimore. My first stop for Kwanzaa this year will be in Baltimore. Monday, December the 26th at the Downtown Cultural Arts Center, 401 North Howard Street. Again, I will be spending the first night in Baltimore for Kwanzaa. Monday, December the 26th, 6 until 9 at the Downtown Cultural Arts Center, 401 North Howard Street. Tickets will be available at the door if they do not sell out. Now, let me warn you, my event always sells out in Baltimore. Last Sunday's event in Washington, D.C. was also a sellout. So if you're planning on coming to Baltimore, please do get your tickets in advance. And then on Wednesday, the third day of Kwanzaa, I will be in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida, for the first time in about four years. That will be on Wednesday, December the 28th, 6 to 9 program. And then again, Friday, December the 30th. Friday, December the 30th, I will be in Motown, Detroit, Michigan. Friday, December the 30th for the fifth night of Kwanzaa. And in Detroit, we will be at the Greater New Mount Moriah Baptist Church in Detroit. Okay, and then we will end it on the last day of Kwanzaa, New Year's Day, January 1st. Um, in no better place could we in Kwanzaa than Hotlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so my brothers and sisters in Atlanta, I will see you on New Year's Day at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, 
on Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard. That is on January the 1st, Atlanta, Georgia, Shrine of the Black Madonna, Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard. And that is a five until eight o'clock program. And then we go to Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. Dr. Umar Johnson will be speaking in Los Angeles for the first time since 2014. It's been almost three long years. I will be speaking at the Ward AME Church in Los Angeles, California on Saturday, January the 7th. And then I will be in Durham, North Carolina. Durham, North Carolina for the first time in 13 years. The last time I spoke in Durham, North Carolina, I was Minister of Education for Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. I was the youngest and the only youth at that time on the parent body of the greatest of all associations that led by His Excellency, the provisional president and prophet of revolutionary pan-African nationalism, the right excellent honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. So Durham, North Carolina, I'm going to bring my A game because I know it's been 13 long years. Last time you saw me, I was the minister of Marcus Garveyism, and now I'm the prince of Pan-Africanism. That event will be held at the Haiti Community Center, Haiti Thai Community Center in Durham, North Carolina. Tickets are going. So North Carolina, get those tickets. You can get your tickets at princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com prince of panafricanism dot eventbrite dot com or you can go to my website dr umar johnson dot com and you can click on the eventbrite link and it will take you right to the page where you can purchase the tickets okay so that's how that's rolling tonight i want to talk about part one because i'm going to have to do a couple of these so we're going to do part one of what's love got to do with it Okay, what's love got to do with it? Common mistakes that black men and black women make when they date. Common mistakes that black men and black women make when they date. Ah. So, needless to say, we need strong black relationships so we can build strong black families so we can raise strong, psychologically healthy black children. Because some of you might say, I understand he's a therapist, but he's a revolutionary Pan-Africanist. Why is he dealing with relationships? Because I am race first. I am unapologetically African. If I am about the race, I have to be about the communities. And if I'm going to be about the communities, I have to be about the families. And if I want to be about the families, I have to be about productive, progressive, healthy black male black female relationships so there's no such thing as being a nationalist and not being concerned with family so the way we're going to do this is i'm going to talk about one mistake that men make and then i'll talk about one mistake that a woman makes until we cover the entire 10 on each list my man list and my female list Okay, and let me just also clarify, brothers and sisters, that I speak to you from the position of a psychotherapist. I speak to you from the position of a doctor of psychology. I speak to you from the position of someone with almost 20 years of experience in this field. So a lot of my information on my insights and impressions that I'm going to share with you tonight comes directly from my work with black men, black women, black families, black children. Okay, so. That is to say that all of my information is original. It's original. I do not regurgitate what other people say. I do not bootleg other people's intellectual property. I do not steal the ideas that other people do. Now, I do understand in the conscious community, a lot of my information gets borrowed without my permission. I hear a lot of Dr. Umar's information come out of the mouths of other conscious speakers and scholars, and I don't mind because as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't belong to me. It comes through me. It would be nice if I got credit from them Negroes for stealing my messages and my sound bites and my quotes and my stats and other things, but it's all good as long as they're using it for a good purpose. Okay, so number one, 
And these are not in any order. These are not in any order. Some may apply to you. Some may not apply to you. Okay. So number one for the brothers. When you decide that you're going to put in time with a particular woman, you met her, you guys have dated a couple of times, and for whatever reason, whether it's sex, whether it's emotional satisfaction, whether it is long-term commitment, it is very important that us men communicate to our women up front what the exact status is of this relationship and whether or not that status can change. It is very important once you've decided that you're going to hang around with this woman. You've decided that this is not a one night stand. You've decided that this is not going to be one date. You decided that there's something you like about this queen. If you have decided that there's something about this sister that is going to keep you around her, okay, for whatever reason, it is important that you communicate that to her. Let her know what her status is in your life. What is the status of that relationship in your life? And then let her know if that status can change. This is important. In other words, listen, I'm into you physically. I love what we do together physically. I'm not looking for a relationship, but I love the time we spend together. That's where I'm at with this. I don't think it's going to change or it could change and grow into something else. But I want to let you know, as of right now, I like the time we spend without a commitment. And that's all I'm looking for. Tell her that. Now, I know some brothers are going to say, well, you know, they don't want to hear that. That's true. She may not want to hear it, but she will respect you for being honest and what you have to understand is that there's some women not a lot not a lot but there's some sisters who do not take responsibility for the role they play in dysfunctional or unfulfilling relationships so protect your so to protect yourself as a black man to protect yourself as a black man you need to make her responsible for the relationship that she's about to participate in. See, when you tell her that I'm into you, I want to try to build a long-term relationship with you. You've made it clear. So if you find out she's dealing with other brothers that she's not talking about, you find out she's still backsliding with her baby dad, if you decide to leave, it will be very clear why because you told her your intentions it's not a situation where she don't know if you're serious so she's still playing with baby dad here's a situation where you've told her that you're serious you find out she's still dealing with her ex and you decide to leave she was forewarned she was forewarned you told her up front that i'm into you like that I'm studying you to see if you can be my queen. I'm studying you to see if you can be my wife. Okay? So tell her up front. If it's purely sexual, tell her up front. Okay? Women need to know so they can be clear with themselves, so they can regulate their emotional attachment. They also need to know, okay? So they can decide if they want to participate in that arrangement. And they also need to know to protect you, black men. Because some sisters like to play the victim in every relationship. Some women like to always be the victim. They do not believe in taking responsibility. They want to always blame you for what you did not tell them. So to protect your reputation, protect your character, to protect your integrity, tell her the status of the relationship so she cannot come back later and say you misled me it's true she may have known you had other women it's true she may have known that you were not serious she may have already knew it but you need to verbally state it 
to her face so she cannot use you as a scapegoat later or an excuse later to try to destroy your reputation because you did not say it. I'm going to say this again. Even if she knows her role in your life, you need to state it so that your conscience can be clear as to any type of blame she tries to put on you later down the road. Up front and honest, make her responsible for the type of relationship you're asking her to be in. Make her responsible for the type of relationship you are asking her to be in. Ashe, Ashe. Sisters, now we're gonna do one for the sisters. For the sisters, never tell a man you're gonna leave him and you do not leave. I'm gonna say it again, black woman, Sisters, y'all listening to me tonight? I hope y'all sisters is call your girlfriend, call your aunt, call your mom. Some of them need this. Call grandma. Okay? Call whomever. Okay? Never tell a man that I'm going to leave you for cheating. I'm going to leave you for not treating me right. I'm going to leave you for putting your hands on me. I'm going to leave you for not spending time with your children. I'm going to leave you for putting all the financial obligation on my plate and you do not leave. Every time you tell a man that you are going to leave and you do not leave, you give a little bit of your power over to him. See, when a relationship starts, a relationship starts with 50, 50 percent power. There's equal balance between the man and the woman in the relationship. A perfect relationship has a perfect balance of 50, 50, 50 percent masculine. You controlling your role, 50% feminine, she controlling her role. So when you tell him you're not doing things right, you're using your power. You're not do you're not paying the bills, you're not spending time with the children, you're not taking care of me. 50% power. And then you say, you know what? I'm leaving if you do this again. I'm leaving the next time you cheat. I'm leaving the next time you spend the rent money. I'm leaving the next time you miss one of our son's football games. And then you do not leave. Do you know what you just did? You got 50% power. You ain't got 50% no more. Now you got 49%. The next time you say you're going to leave and you don't leave, now you got 48%. And it keeps going and going and going. And every time you give up a percentage point, you give a percentage point over to him. So we have relationships now in the black community that are very lopsided where the man controls 99% of the relationship and the sister only has 1%. You say one thing, it goes out his other ear. He ain't paying attention to you. You ain't leaving. You done already told him 50 times you was leaving and you ain't went no damn way. So let me get this right. You've been dating this man for 30 years. Y'all was high school sweethearts. You got me? Now y'all in y'all 40s. And you've been telling him since high school you was going to leave him if he cheated. Or you was going to leave him if he don't start helping you, you know, share the responsibilities or spending time with you. Because in high school, neither one of y'all was paying no bills. But in high school, he wasn't putting in the time with you. And here you is 40 years old. And you telling him that uh, if you don't put time in with me, I'm going to leave. You're going nowhere and he knows it so he don't have to change. Can I say it again? You're not going nowhere. He knows it and so he don't have to change because you gave all your power away. Black women, stop giving your power away. Now, some of you are going to say, well, wait a minute, Doc. Isn't the man supposed to lead? Yes, but what do we know about leadership? What do we know about leadership? The leader only leads with the power given to the leader from the person following. So even followers have power. It is the follower who put the leaders out front. You gave him the power to lead the family. You gave him the power to lead the relationship. Nothing's wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with that. The problem is some of you, because of thirstiness, some of you, because of thirstiness, gave away your power prematurely. You gave him the authority to lead you 
before you fully evaluated this man. You gave him the authority to regulate the relationship before you sufficiently investigated him, before you made an informed conscious decision as to whether or not he's the man to lead you to where you want to go. Stop saying you're going to leave if you don't. Now, I'm going to say something now that might sound a little controversial to some sisters, but I have to say it because it's the truth. I would never tell a woman not to leave a man who's cheating. I would never tell a woman not to leave a man who's cheating. If she wants to leave, she feels disrespected. That's her decision. I would never tell a woman to stay. I would never tell a woman to leave. Even as a therapist, I never make, you have to make that decision. But I will tell you when you better leave. Y'all listening, ladies? I'm going to tell you when you better leave. And you better leave when you are no longer the queen bee in his life. Boom. Can I say it again? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. If you were number one, and now you no longer number one, you was his queen, you was his everything, wife or not, because you could be the queen and not be the wife. You could be the wife and not be the queen. Can I say that again? Can, can I say this one more time? I'm just giving it real. Psychotherapy talk. You can be the wife and not be his queen. You can be the queen and not be his wife. Okay? So I speak of wife's, excuse me, I speak of queen status, not wife status. Wife status is a legal thing. That's paperwork. Wife status is paperwork. Queen status is in his heart. Who he carries in his heart, that's the queen. Who got the paperwork? That's just the wife. I'm just going to keep it real. Now, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, the queen and the wife is one and the same. In the perfect world, the queen and the wife is one and the same. But unfortunately, we do not live in a perfect world. Unfortunately, a lot of people get married for a lot of wrong reasons. Okay, I know dozens of brothers and sisters who are happily married where the king and the husband is the same and where the queen is and the wife is the same. Perfect situations. I know some excellent exemplary marriages. I know some excellent exemplary marriage, perfect relationships. But then I also know some other ones where she only married James because John John wouldn't stop playing the field. But her heart still belonged to John John. I know situations where he married Tabitha because TT couldn't get her act together. Tabitha, a good wife. But TT still got his heart. I'm just keeping it real today. I'm just keeping it real today. Okay? So ladies, never say you leaving and you don't leave. Okay? But on the flip side, if you're no longer his queen bee, you're no longer the queen wife, you're no longer the empress of the throne, when a man lets you drop down from first place, if you let a man move you out of the number one spot, you let a man take you off the queendom of his life, I can guarantee you that your descent will not stop when you come to second place. If you let a man move you from first place to second place, I promise you, you will be in the third place, fourth place, fifth place until you become the bottom B and then you are out the door. Did you hear me, ladies? The, there's nothing more disrespectful. It's more disrespectful than cheating for a woman to...
to stay in a relationship where she was once the queen and now she got moved to the side for another. You've been replaced on your throne with another woman. You have to leave. You have to leave. If my daughters came to me and say, Daddy, my husband cheated. I say, baby girl, that was wrong. Now you got to search your soul and then you have to have a conversation with him about what he did, why it was done, and if anything can do about it. And based on that conversation, baby girl, you have to decide whether or not you want to stay in that relationship. That's what I would tell her. You have to make that decision based on your situation, okay, and based on that conversation. I will give you insight, but I will not give you a decision. Only you can decide whether you should leave your husband. That ain't my place, even as your father. Now, let my daughter come back to me and say, Daddy, I'm no longer my husband's number one woman. That woman he cheated with, he's paying her bills, raising her kids. He's taking from us to give to her. Time that normally was spent with me is now being spent. I say, stop. Stop for me, baby girl. Stop right there. Do you know what you're telling your daddy? You're telling your daddy that that man replaced you. He took you off your throne and put another woman in your seat. You are no longer the queen. You are no longer number one. You are no longer his empress. You no longer have his heart. And I think it may be time for you to pack your bags. I can't tell you to leave because he cheated. But I'm telling you, you better leave when you're no longer number one. Because before you know it, you're going to be number 10 and out the way. Real talk. Facts. Let me get back to the brothers. Do not demean your children's mothers in front of the women that you are dating. Listen. Do not put down disgrace your children's mothers in front of the women that you are dating. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. We didn't all had our situations with the mothers of our children. I know it's not easy. Now, for a lot of men who don't have other men you can trust or even women you can trust, that woman you're dating becomes your confidant. But I want to say something to you black men right now. The woman you're dating even if you love her, even if you are cohabitating with her, she is not necessarily the best choice for confidant because some women talk too damn much. Did you hear what I said? In a perfect world, your queen is your confidant. I understand. In a perfect world, your queen is your confidant. But we don't live in a perfect world. And sometimes you have to find someone else to disclose your innermost feelings with, disclose your innermost hurts and pains with. It may not be her because guess what, fellas? And I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. That same woman that you're telling your deepest privations to, that same woman you're sharing the deepest part of your essence to, if that relationship does not work out. Guess what she going to do? Not all sisters. Some women have a lot of class. Some black women have a lot of integrity. Some black women, no matter how the relationship ended or when it ended, will never take the trust that you had in them and betray it in a fit of rage to try to destroy your name or reputation or credibility. Some women have that much honor some women have that much integrity. Some women have that much class in a perfect world. But guess what, my brothers? We don't live in a perfect world. And some sisters don't give a damn. If they had their eyes set on being with you and you ended it for whatever reason, justifiable or unjustifiable, and no one can determine that except you and her, okay? She will take anything she learned about you anything she know about you and try to use it to destroy you. And this is why when we date women, we have to make sure black man, 
We have to make sure that we're not letting our penis make the decisions as to who we should be giving our time to. Think with this head, not the other one. My young brothers in college, think with this head, not the other one. You want an honorable woman, a woman with class, with character, and integrity. Choose your women well. Please do this. Please do this. Because there are, there is a such thing known as a hood rat. There is a such thing known as a hood rat. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I respect and honor all black women. Class, no class, honor, this because she's the black woman. She's the original human being. She's God's first manifestation of human life. I respect all black women, even if they don't respect themselves. And all black men should respect black women, even if they don't respect themselves, okay? But I do know that there is a category of sisters that I would refer to as hood rats, okay? Yes, a hood rat has nothing to do with how much education you have. A hood rat has nothing to do with what kind of car you drive. A hood rat has nothing to do with what type of social status her parents come from. A hood rat has nothing to do with how much money she makes. You could be a million dollar hood rat. You could be a $50,000 a year hood rat. You could be a hood rat that's an engineer. You could be a hood rat that's a medical doctor. You could be a hood rat that own your own business. A hood rat has nothing to do with social economic status for Dr. Umar Johnson. A hood rat is a black woman, or any woman for that matter, but I don't date outside my race, and I hope none of you Negroes are dating outside of your race because I do not respect men who go outside their race. OK, I don't respect that. A black man needs to be loyal to black women. And there are too many black men going outside of our community to find their wives and spouses and baby mamas and, and partners. And I don't like it. It is disrespectful to black women. It is disrespectful to little black girls. And most of all, it is disrespected, disrespectful to our African queen mother ancestors, our African queen mother ancestors who were raped and abused and brutalized, treated like animals and sexual objects, had their breasts cut off, clitorises cut off, not to be graphic here, but black women and black men, but black women who, who I'm speaking of caught hell during slavery. She was raped, and after she got raped, she had to get right up and go feed the master who raped her his breakfast. Did you hear what I just said? He would rape her, and after he raped her, she had to go prepare his breakfast. Do you know how psychologically traumatizing that was to our great-great-great-grandmothers and our great-great-great-great-grandmothers and our great-great-great-great-great-grandmothers? You understand me? Okay? My great, 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 great grandmother was born into slavery. Her mother, my great, 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 great grandmother, Betsy Bailey, the same Betsy that raised Frederick Douglass, okay? Raped by the slave master. Her mother, my great, 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 great grandmother, Jenny. Her mother, great, 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 great grandmother, Selah, for whom our youngest daughter is named, were raped. And I'm going to turn around 200 years later. I'm going to turn around 200 years later and go and marry a daughter of the of the of the men of the race that raped my female ancestors. No, sir. Black women come in all shapes and sizes. Black women come in all colors, brother. You want lemon? We got lemon. You want vanilla? We got sisters who look vanilla. You want butter almond? We got butter almond. You want butter pecan? We got butter pecan. You want sweet brown sugar? We got sweet brown sugar. That's right. We got caramel. You want fudge? We got fudge. You want them skinny? We got skinny. You want them full figure? We got full figure. Yes. 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 We got little lemon all the way up. To full figured fudge. Little lemon all the way up to full figured fudge and everything in between. No excuse for going outside the race, my brothers. 
no excuse for going outside the race. And don't ask me, can I still be committed to my people? I'm married to a white woman. You don't just marry a woman. You marry her family. And if you marry the family, you marry the community. And if you marry the community, you marry the race. So you ain't just married to the white woman. You married white people. You married white people. Facts. I didn't make the mistake you did. Facts. But brothers, don't talk about the mothers of your children in front of other women. It is distasteful. Even if it's, even if it's correct, it will bias her view of you. Because she may have her own issues with the fathers of her children. And to have another man demean the mothers of his children in front of her when she has issues with the fathers of her own children, that could be a recipe for disaster for that relationship. She may kick you to the curb. Do not ever say anything negative about another black woman in front of another black woman because there's still a sisterhood there. There is still a sisterhood there. It is very, very important very, very important that we respect the mothers of our children, okay? Especially in the presence of a future mother of our children because the way she's looking at it, if our relationship does not work out, are you gonna say to the next woman about me what you're saying to me about the last woman? She will generalize it. Don't speak evil to her about your child's mother. Now, let me go back over to the sisters. Number two. Black women, never beg a man to introduce you to his mother. He didn't forget to introduce you to his mother. He's not introducing you to his mother or he's not introducing you to his mother just yet. See, some of y'all, you want to rush it. Don't rush it. He may, you might be the one. But sometimes, sisters, y'all can rush it. Well, you know, I've been dating him for a year. I haven't met his mom. Well, it's only been a year. You don't necessarily meet mom after no year. Do you understand me? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But if the brother doing everything else right, and the only thing missing is the mommy piece, and there's no other issue, give it some time. Give it a little bit of time. Okay, don't rush it because you might be on. Sometimes sisters are so paranoid about being used, abused and thrown back that y'all force our hand and no man wants his hand forced. Did you hear what I just said, black woman? No man wants his hand forced by no woman, especially when it comes to marriage or commitment. Okay. Am I telling you to just hang around if the relationship ain't going to war? Hell no. Make a decision. If you deciding to leave, then leave. But if you got to force a man's hand, then you're automatically telling me you need to be gone because you obviously feel y'all should be somewhere else and he don't. So if you feel it's time to leave, leave. But no man wants his hand forced. Some of y'all be running around when I'm going to meet your mom. 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 Listen, the only women who meet our mothers except the ones we grew up with and live next door and your little teenage girlfriend. But when you a grown man and you got your grown man life, the only women meeting our mothers are women who we are fairly certain of has a chance at becoming wifey and queen. Queen wifey, wifey queen. You ain't meeting my mother unless I think we might be jumping at broom. You ain't got to remind me to introduce you. You ain't got to manipulate me to introduce you. You do not meet mom unless I feel it's that time. If you are here begging a man to meet his mother, then guess what? You're probably not the one. And you sisters know my rule on cohabitation, right, ladies? What's Dr. Umar Johnson's rule on cohabitation? And yes, I'm working on a book for sisters, a relationship book for sisters and a separate relationship book for black men. I'm working on that. 
But my cohabitation rule, I want y'all ladies to listen up. Listen to me well, sisters. I'm talking to you like your brother slash therapist tonight. The straight talk with the prince. Nobody can do it better. Okay? Forget all that Steve Harvey shit. Okay? This is the real thing. Okay? Cohabitation. I believe everyone should live together for a little while before they get married. So you can really learn and study that person. You should not live together forever, though. I want to be clear. This is not forever. Ladies, did you hear me? Not forever. Okay? Minimum, three months. A season together is acceptable. Maximum, two years. Let me say it again, ladies. Maximum, two Two years. Let me say it again, ladies. Maximum two years. So you say, Dr. Umar, I've been living with my boyfriend for five years. And he told me he's still making up his mind. He's not sure if I'm the one. Listen to me. You listening? He already made up his damn mind. Are you listening? He already made up his mind. You ain't her. Facts. It don't take a man 10 years to decide if you're the woman or not. He knows. Six months, we got a nice little gut feeling. One year, we're fairly certain. 18 months, damn near certain. Two years, max. Let me tell you what sisters do. Let me tell you the mistake black women make when it comes to cohabitation. Okay? Y'all stay around longer than two years thinking that you earn extra points for hanging around. Wrong. Wrong. I know brothers, I know y'all little, I know y'all saying, Doc, you letting out the, but I'm telling y'all, I got to tell them, let's just keep it real, fellas. We got to keep it real. Ladies, the longer you hang around after the two years, the more your stock drops. The more your stock drops, okay? Okay? Well, I saw that little, if I'm the prince, who's my father? Okay, when I say prince of Pan-Africanism, I'm talking political ideology here. Okay? Marcus Garvey is the father of revolutionary Pan-African nationalism. Okay? I'm not so arrogant to think that there's no one that succeeds or exceeds Dr. Umar Johnson. There's still some humility to this Leo. This Leo still has humility. So I'm never going to call myself the king because too many great Pan-Africanists have come before me. I will never call myself the king. Do you understand? There was Garvey. There was Crummel. There was Malcolm. There was Nkrumah. There was Sekou Touré. There was Patrice Lumumba. Okay, Edward Wilmot Blyden. Henry Highland Garnett. I can name Pan-Africanists all day long. I will never call myself the king. That's arrogant. I would say Garvey's the king, okay? And those other elders before Garvey were kings or emperors of pan African. I'm just the prince. I'm a child of theirs. I'm the prince and I'm going to stay the prince. Now, let me get back on topic. I know you had a little intellectual masturbation moment. It's okay. Where was I at? Cohabitation, okay? Ladies, after two years, you need to make up your mind. Ladies, after two years, you I don't want to hear, he ain't asked me to marry. Giving your power, look what you're doing. You're giving your power away. Here we go. Here we go. Two years, you still hanging around? Are you going to marry me or not? I done raised, I done took care of your kids. Da, 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 da. Giving your power away. Da, 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 da. Let me give you an analogy that will help you understand this concept of power in a relationship. Let's look at you and your child. Mothers, you know how you have a son and he's real bad in school and he comes home from school and you give him a consequence for having a bad day. You keeping your power as mother. You're going to do what you're supposed to do. I'm going to whip that ass. So I'm going to take that video game, no cell phone, early bed. You're going to clean up the block, volunteer at the old folks home, volunteer at the homeless shelter. You get the drift, right? You keeping your power. But then one day he comes home. And you get on your hands and knees in front of your five-year-old son and you say, will you please stop misbehaving in school? You're stressing me out. I'm going to lose my job. Your teachers keep calling me. Please, I don't know what to do with you, son. Please stop treating your mother like that. 
Do you know what you just did? You just gave your son all of your power. He ain't going to never listen to your ass no more. His mother just told him to his face that she can't do nothing with him. You don't ever tell your child you can't do nothing with them. Your power is gone. Some of you do the same thing in relationship with men. Some of you do the same thing in relationships with men. Will you please stop cheating on me? Will you please put some time in? Why are you pleading? You have the same amount of power he has. Why are you pleading, black woman? You have the same amount of power he has. Use your power. Dr. Johnson, can you give me an example of how I can use my power? Sure. Sure. He ain't been spending time with you. He comes home. I would have my bag packed. You're not moving out. You're just going to take a little two-week vacation. And I would tell him, listen, you have disregarded my feelings again. So I'm going to go stay with one of my relatives. Don't tell him where you're going. Do not tell him where. He don't have a right to know that. I'm going to take two weeks off so I can clear my mind. And I'm going to stay with one of my relatives. I'll be safe. I'll even text you when I get there to let you know I'm safe because he wants to know his baby is safe. And guess what? Them whole two weeks, don't call him. Don't email him. Don't send him no messages. Don't respond to no texts. This is how you take your power back. You got to show him that you have regained your self-control. Guess what? After those two weeks, when you come back, if he really care about you, he going to change his whole game. You want to know why? Because the ego of a man requires that we know we have absolute control over our women. When a woman shows a man that she can control herself, even when we know she in love with us, that is a very difficult pill for a male ego to swallow. And guess what, sister? Make him swallow that pill. If you only want to leave for a week, a week is good. But it must be at least seven nights out of that house with no contact. And when you come back, you cannot, you cannot, you must not, you shall not, you will not tell him where you were. Get your power Oh, I agree with you. I think a man can do this too. Yes, without question, a lot of what you hear me say tonight for the men and the women can be used interchangeably, but I am applying the principle to the gender that I think needs to hear it more. Do you follow? In other words, women are the ones who are normally wanting some sort of uh, concession from their man, more so than the men because you all outnumber us. There's not enough of us to go around. When you count for homosexuality, black on black crime, mental illness, mass incarceration, police extermination, bisexuality, okay? So it's not a lot of men. We have some American cities where the black man, black woman ratio is like one to 20. One to ten. I don't think there's a city in America where the black male female ratio is less than one to three. I don't know of any place. So even, you know, so, you know, normally it's the woman saying, hey, you know, can I get a little bit more quality in this relationship? So I'm, it can apply to a man as well. If he's letting a woman walk over him, too, he got to get his power back. But it's normally the other way. So I'm just applying it that way. Let me go back to the brothers. Do not show up smelling like weed, cigarettes, and alcohol when you're going out on a date. Now, I'm hearing this a lot in therapy. Women are saying, I'm going out on a date. His car smells like weed. He's smelling like cigarettes. He's smelling. Listen, first of all, I'm trying to understand why she even went out with you. Ain't uh, My daughter better never go out on no date with no man. He's picking her up smelling like alcohol. That man might be drunk driving, smelling like weed. We know weed ain't going to kill you. More people die from cigarettes and alcohol than have ever died from marijuana. Okay, marijuana is not fatal, but it still can be addictive. Okay, 
So brother, if you're dealing with addiction, and a lot of black men are dealing with some very strong addictions that we are in denial about. We are self-medicating with marijuana. A lot of black men are self-medicating with that 40 ounce bottle, alcohol. A lot of black men are self-medicating with hard drugs. A lot of black men are self-medicating with cigarettes. Brothers, get you some mental health treatment. Shoot me a text, send me an email, okay? In fact, Dr. Kenneth Washington, who's the president of the Association of Black Psychologists, okay, I'm sure between him and myself and the other black male psychologists across the country, we're going to find somebody to help you work through your issues because a lot of brothers are dating because they're trying to escape their mental trauma. Stop wasting time with women messing their lives up because you got issues you don't want to face. And the quickest way to avoid your personal demons is to go spend time with another woman. You hear me, black man? Sex ain't going to cure your depression. You got me? Marijuana smoking ain't going to eliminate that, those memories from childhood sexual abuse. Getting drunk every day, 12 cans of beer every night. That's not going to eliminate the fact that your father walked out on you. You need to talk to someone. You have a problem that needs to be processed. Okay, my brother? Black men go through a lot. We go through a lot. I empathize with my brothers. So I'm not, you know, uh, being accusatory here. I'm not degrading you. I am, black men have it hard. We have it hard. We're the only men in America whose women do not have to respect them. We're the only men in, the, in, in, in America whose women out-earn them. We're the only men in America whose women out-educate them. We're the only men in, in, in America whose women collectively have more wealth and capital than we do. We're the only men in America who are not allowed to be men. Do you understand? So I know it's hard being a black man. I know why you smoking your life away. I know why you drinking your life away. I know why you snorting your life away. I know that. But what I'm saying, black man, is you need to get some help. You need to get some help. You got mental problems. You don't need to be dating that sister right now. Take care of you first. See, we keep talking about having a relationship with another person. You have to build a relationship with yourself. You have to build a relationship with yourself first. Do you understand me? So brothers, Please make sure you pick her up smelling like a gentleman because a lot of women talk about this. They get out your car and now they smell like cigarette smoke and they got to go in and see their kids and their kids, mommy, you don't even smoke. Why are you smelling like 20 packs of Newports? Why are you smelling like 10 boxes of Marlboro? Why are you smelling like you didn't drunk 20 uh, 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 Grey Gooses? Okay, so brothers, make sure you come to, come to them appropriately, okay? Number three for women. We're up to number three. Sisters, you ain't going to want to hear this, but I got to say it. You cannot rewrite a relationship contract just because your feelings have gotten involved. I know you don't want to hear that. I know. No, no. Men are very rational and very logical by nature and by nurture. When it comes to contractual obligations, men are very anal when it comes to contractual obligations and understandings. Women, you are more esoteric and emotional and abstract. We're not. It's concrete. So in other words, you start dating a man and you guys agree to keep it recreational. Agree to keep it physical, which I'm going to call recreation, okay? Booty call or social call or whatever. And your feelings for him are starting to change. But his feelings for you have not changed. And now you want him to rewrite a contract. Remember now. In order to rewrite a contract, both parties must be willing to renegotiate. 
But if he don't want to renegotiate, he don't have to because he was honest up front. Now, if he wasn't honest up front, sister, you have leverage because what? The contract is null and void. Okay? The contract is null and void. He did not stick to the provisions. But if he was honest and said, this is what it is, and then you come later and you try to rewrite it because your feelings got involved, he don't have to rewrite that contract. Now, if he's a gentleman, okay, he may be open to what you have to say. He may want to renegotiate. There's nothing wrong with asking for a renegotiation. I don't think anything wrong with a sister asking a brother to renegotiate. That's all right. But if he don't want to, he don't have to. The question you should ask yourself is why did you agree to an arrangement that you knew you could not live with? Why did you agree to an arrangement that you knew you cannot live with? And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Black woman, I love you. No matter how good your cookies are, no matter how good your cookies are, those butter almond cookies is off the hook. He love them. Those nice soft fudge cookies, he love them. Those butter pecan cookies, those sweet brown sugar cookies, that hot caramel cookie, those soft lemon cookies, he love them cookies. But guess what? No cookie, no matter how good it is, is going to make a man commit to you. Facts. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. No matter how good them cookies are, you bake them cookies up so nice, they be smelling so good, they so soft and sweet, they will not force a commitment. Sex has never forced a commitment. Sex will never force a commitment. Okay? Cookie power is important. Cookie power is critical. Cookie power helps the world go around. But cookie power has never made nor will it ever save a relationship. You cannot write the rules because your feelings got involved. Be a big girl. Don't agree to the contract unless you know you can live with the terms. Sometimes it's better to gracefully bow out. You know why a lot of women agree to contracts? Even when the brother is upfront and honest, the reason a lot of women agree to contracts is because they thirsty for companionship. You agree to anything, right? You thirsty. So you ran with it. You got to get your thirst in order. We're going to come back to thirst. I'm thirsty right now for orange juice, not for no woman. My God. Now, number four for the brothers. When you start dating women, and even when you're in the relationship, Talk about her during the date. Stop talking about your selfish ass. So many women complain about how they go on dates with brothers. And the whole date, the whole dinner conversation is about him. Sister, like Dr. Umar, he never once asked me anything about me. Even when I tried to talk about me, he ended up looping the conversation back to talking about himself. Brothers, sisters don't like that. They know we have an ego. They know we got a little bit of arrogance. They know we have some uh, masculine self-centeredness. They understand that. But you have to discipline yourself. You have to discipline yourself to not be so self-centered that you never talk to her. As far as I'm concerned, that's grounds for dismissal. I think that's grounds for a dismissal. Now, a sister might let that rod once. She might let it rod once, but I don't think a black woman should let that rod twice. Y'all was out three, four hours. Y'all went to a play. Y'all went to a concert. Y'all went to dinner. And all you keep talking about is your business, your kids, your life, your organization, your investments, your plans. 
You never asked her about hers. And you know what really is a bad thing? When you're dating a woman with children and you never ask her about her babies. How can you be dating a woman with children and you never ask her about her babies? Do you know what that's going to make her think? That's going to make her think that you're trying to act as if she don't have children. And you got to watch that because women with children have a very difficult time with dating because they have to screen men. They have to screen men who may be trying to have a relationship with them without having a relationship with their babies. This is a package. It is a meal deal. And brothers, when you date sisters, you need to go into it with that mindset. It is a package deal. It is disrespectful to try to separate a woman in that relationship from the children. Okay? You don't need to be meeting the children up front, though. That should come later. A woman should not be introducing you to her children unless she has a pretty strong feeling that this relationship is headed for something serious. Okay? I totally disagree with Steve Harvey. I totally disagree with Steve Harvey when he said in his book, when someone asked, when should a man meet the kids? He said, as soon as possible, he must have been drinking. Steve Harvey must have had a blunt. You don't ever tell no woman to introduce men to her kids. Do you know how many men would be meeting her kids? I don't know what Steve was talking about. Okay, but that was totally, totally, totally irrelevant. Okay, totally irrelevant. All right. Okay, so make sure you talk about her and not yourself. Going back over to the sisters. Y'all ready for this one, ladies? I know I'm going to hit some people with this one. Ladies, y'all ready for this one? Let me get a swig on this. I need some more juice for this one. Give me one second. Okay. Ladies, don't ever, ever, ever ever set a baby trap to try to keep a man i know y'all don't want to hear this i know y'all don't want to hear this ladies never use a baby trap to try to keep a man now let me let me put this in context let me put this in context when a child is conceived two people are responsible when a child is conceived, two people are responsible. I want to be clear. I am not putting conception on you. Not at all. Okay? But I'm saying that within a relationship, sometimes there are certain understandings that are made up front. And sometimes a woman might feel that if I manipulate this a little bit and go against what we agreed to, that maybe, okay, if I, you know, bring about conception in this beautiful gift from God, that maybe he will marry me. Listen, when a man has been up front with you and said he don't want children or don't want children now or don't want any more children, or don't want children before marriage and you try to create something after there was an understanding of whatever that will not bring him closer to you necessarily in fact that may trigger in him a feeling of betrayal a feeling of sabotage a feeling of entrapment conspiracy in mistrust he may never trust you again now i know why some women use baby traps let me tell you why y'all use baby traps the reason some women are still using baby traps in the 21st century is because it works once in a while in particular it works with men who are very committed 
to their religions. If a brother is heavy into Islam and he goes to the masjid and he's real close with the imam or a brother is a junior pastor at the church, he's running Sunday school, he's uh, working out with the band, he does Bible study and he's on a first name basis with the bishop or the pastor. Those types of brothers know they cannot go back to church, cannot go back to the masjid with a woman with a baby who's not married. So in situations like that, okay, I have a couple friends of my own who marry women just because they got pregnant. And guess what? In a couple situations, it was all right. Two of the situations, everything fine. They're blessed. The other three situations, it ain't good. It ain't good at all. Okay? And I'm trying to tell one of these brothers that you're at fault more than she is because you married this woman knowing that you wasn't into her. You only married her because you didn't want to deal with the guilt and shame of the social pressure or the social stigmatism that your church or your masjid or your Jehovah's Witness Hall put on you. Okay? So the reason some women still use baby traps is because once in a while it works. You might be the lucky sister who used a baby trap to get a marriage or a commitment and it might work. But guess what? 99% of the time, it will not work. 99% and a man who was forced into marriage through a baby trap, a man who was forced into marriage through a baby trap is likely to go outside that marriage without feeling guilty because he's going to see that more as a business arrangement. I am here against my will because I have a child. And if I decide to entertain other women, I can do it without any shame because just like you got pregnant without my permission, okay, I'm going to go outside this relationship without your permission. So you have to watch those types of things. I don't know of too many women who are happy. I don't know of too many women who are happy in a marriage or outside of a marriage with a commitment that was forced with conception. You want a man to want you because he want you. You want a man to want you because he want you. Now, I'm not talking about sisters who get pregnant so they can be taken care of the rest of their life. That's a little bit different. That's a lot more Machiavelli. And I'm talking about women who actually care about the man and use the baby to keep the man. I'm not talking about the gold digger type that will straight lock you with a baby so you can flip her lifestyle for the next 50 years. That's downright trifling. I hope we ain't got no sisters like that. I hope none of the sisters on this live feed is the type of sisters who will go out and get a baby so they can keep those Louis Vuitton bags and that in that uh Cadillac truck coming. I don't think we that trifling. Okay. At least not in the conscious community, right? <laughs> okay. Number five for the brothers. We almost halfway done. Never make excuses about what you don't have. Never make excuses about what you don't have when you're dealing with women. That will make you look weak. That will make you look insecure. That will make you into a self-doubter. And no woman is attracted to an insecure man. Women cannot stand an insecure man. You pick her up and your car ain't nice. I'm sorry, I don't have a better car. You take her to a restaurant. I'm sorry, I couldn't afford to take you to a better restaurant. Uh, you're not that tall. I'm sorry, I know you would prefer to date a taller man. That is unattractive. Women don't like that shit. Why you keep on feeling sorry for yourself? The worst thing you can do is throw a pity party in front of a woman you're interested in. How are you going to throw a self-pity party in front of a woman that you're interested in? That's the worst thing you can do. Don't no woman want to hear about how you wish you was taller and you wish you had a better job and you wish you can afford a better apartment? It's not about things. It's about you. It's not about things. It's about you. Do you know what you're doing? You're begging her to date you. That's what your weak ass is doing. That's what you're doing. You're literally on your hands and knees 
figuratively speaking, begging that sister to be bothered with you. What the hell is wrong with you? You don't throw no self-pity party. You wash that car up. You clean it up. You understand? And if it's me, I'm going to look at how she deals with the fact that I ain't got a 2017 Hummer. Because I want to make sure she don't want me for materialistic reasons. Okay, remember, dating, the art of war must be applied to dating. The art of war must be applied to dating. You don't want a woman who just going to want you because you got it going on. What if you lose all that? What if you lose all that? You want a woman who's going to be with you no matter what because she loves you, my brother, because she's interested in you, not things. Don't be throwing no pity party. I don't give a damn if you ain't got a car at all and you got to pick her up in a Uber. So what? Don't you ever let nobody make you feel you less than them, ever. I don't care who they is. I don't care who, no woman, no man, you don't feel less because you on the bus. So what? You might be more man than any man driving in the car while you waiting for the bus. You always respect yourself. A woman cannot be attracted to weakness. You understand? She needs a masculine charge to her feminine charge. She don't want no weak, simp-ass, jellyfish, spineless, I wish I looked better, I wish I had a better car, I wish I could do more for you. She want a man. And guess what? Let me do a little reality check for my college-educated black men. Brothers like me with masters and doctorates and certifications, okay? Initials. One of the reasons a lot of sisters don't find college-educated men attractive is because we give up our swag with the more education we get because we're often sacrificing black masculinity so we can participate in the white economic reality. Did you hear what I said? You start sacrificing your swag so you can move up the white man's success ladder to the detriment of being attractive to sisters. Don't no woman want no weak-ass black man, even if he got a Hummer. She don't want no weak-ass black man, even if he is making $100,000 a year. She want a real man. And guess what? If she got to go and get a thug with two strikes on his prison record, a thug selling weed and bootleg DVDs to pay the bills, guess what? And no disrespect to the brother selling the DVDs, because I stays with mine, six for 20 those are some of my best brothers out there in the street. So it's no disrespect. You understand? They making a hustle. Same hustle I would be making if I didn't have a daddy in the house and I wasn't sent to the Scotland School Residential Academy and I didn't have a mother who didn't love me. I wouldn't be where I'm at. I would be doing what he's doing. So I am no better than him. Did you hear me? You bougie college educated. I don't want to trip because I got a big issue with bougie ass college educated Black men, I can't stand you simp ass dudes looking down to the corner brothers, looking down to the incarcerated brothers, acting like you white, dating white. I really got a problem. This is why I don't hang with y'all. None of my close homies is doctors. None of them. I'm the only doctor because you niggas, y'all not about the hood. Y'all not about fixing nothing. Y'all just want to copy the white man's social life. I can't stand you niggas. And I know y'all can't stand me. Because y'all want to figure out why this Negro got all these degrees and he's still chilling on the hood. Why he's still on Susquehanna Avenue. Why he's still on Lehigh Avenue. Why he's still on Girard. Why he always in the hood chilling at the black bookstores and chilling with the black red and, and hanging out with the homies. Because that's who I am. I will never give up my hood stripes. I will never give up my hood stripes. Hood for life. Hood for life. So, brother, never never throw a pity party for yourself. Never sacrifice yourself. Number five for the ladies. Ladies, y'all ready? Stop volunteering information about the last time you had sex. Nobody asked your ass that. Black women, stop volunteering to tell the man you're dating or interested in the last time you had sex. He don't need you to tell him that. Did you hear what I just said? Listen. If you ever decide to become intimate with that man, you ever decide 
to give him a cookie, I can promise you he will know when was the last time you had sex. See, some of y'all set yourself up. And the only reason why you say that is because you just had sex. Let me say it again. <laughs> most of you, there's exceptions to every rule, but most of you, the reason why you volunteering information about the last time you've been intimate with a man and nobody asked you is because you was just intimate with a man. It's guilt. It's guilt. It's insecurity. I didn't ask you that. I don't ever ask a woman when the last time you. I don't need to know that. Don't no man need to know that. Keep that to yourself. You volunteering it? We ain't even talking about that. You know why? Because it was more recent than what you said. Now, let me tell you why we don't need you to say that and why it's not a good job to say that. When you finally decide to bake a cookie with me, when you finally decide to become intimate with a man, he will know. Okay? If you ain't been intimate in two years, he will know. Because he got to knock on that door a couple times before you answer. Okay? You ain't been intimate with a man in 12 months? He gonna know. He got to knock on that door a couple times before you answer. But you're gonna come and tell this man you ain't have sex in five years and then you pull out the loosey-goosey. How you gonna say you ain't have sex in five years and then hit him with a loosey-goosey? Ain't no way in hell you got a loosey-goosey talking about you ain't been intimate in five years. And so do you know what you just did? If you never said nothing and you hit him with the loosey-goosey, he might think that's just how you are biologically. Some women are made different. That's the anatomy. He would have never, you know, maybe that's the way she is, you know. Some women, once in a while, they have a natural loosey-goosey, okay? I couldn't be married to a woman with a loosey-goosey, but some women, loosey-goosey. But if you tell a man that you ain't had sex in two, three years, and then you're hitting with the loosey-goosey, he know you lied. You're done. You're done. Ain't no marriage. Ain't no queen status. Ain't no wifey. You might be hit and run at the most. I'm just going to keep it gangster. You might be hit and run. So if you're running around here with the loosey-goosey, would you please stop volunteering information about when the last time you... And you ladies is cracking up. You sisters ain't right. Look at these ladies. You ladies ain't right. <laughs> sisters, y'all hard on each other. Y'all got to stop that. Okay, what you need to do is go on down to the nutrition store. Go on down to the herbal store and get some of those Dr. Sabi rest in peace herbs or get with Dr. Uh, Baruch down in Silver Springs or get with, uh, who else we got? Scott Whitaker, get with Queen of Four. Uh, who else we got out there? What's my brother? Uh, Tahuti Ma'at Ra, the D Health store. You know what I mean? You better get with some of them herbalists and, and get some herbs for that loosey goosey, okay? Or learn how to keep your damn mouth shut, okay? So stop volunteering information because it's going to mess the relationship up if he find out you lied. Shut up. Keep Be quiet. Okay? So we halfway through. We got five more to go. Let me just throw out again, let everybody know I'm going to be speaking here in Elizabeth, New Jersey tomorrow at the Mickey Walker Community Center. You can get your tickets at the door. Doors open up at two. Program is from three until seven. I have some I Am Nat Turner hoodies. I have some I Am Nat Turner t-shirts. I have DVDs. I have buttons. I have books. Come on out, show some love. We're raising money for the Unapologetically African College Tour, FDMG, as well as the Repatriation Task Force. Tomorrow will be about economics. Elizabeth, economics. Queens, Consciousness. I'm going to say it again. Tomorrow's message and Sunday's message will not be the same. Tomorrow in Elizabeth, New Jersey at 860 Honor Street, A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, 860 Honor Street, the message will be about black economics. On Sunday, the next day, December 11th in Jamaica, Queens at the Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Again, doors open up at 2. Program starts at 3. Okay. The message will be about black consciousness. Tomorrow, Elizabeth Economics, Queen's Consciousness. Saturday, Elizabeth Economics, Sunday, Queen's Consciousness. Tickets will be available at the door. If you need the flyer, you can text me for the flyer, area code 215-989-9858, area code 215-989-9858, area code 215-989-9858. 9858. If you need to email me for the flyer, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com, D R U M A R Johnson.com, D R U M A R Johnson.com. Do not forget, okay, that every Tuesday morning, 
6 a.m. until 8 a.m. I have the free black parent teleconference every Tuesday morning 6 a.m. until 8 a.m. I have the Tuesday morning black parent teleconference okay you can call in ask me any questions you want about your children call in ask me any questions you want about your children some people texting me now somebody just text me about the Lucy Goosey <laughs> y'all crazy okay but I'm gonna send y'all the flyer when I'm done the live stream uh, Kwanzaa tour will begin in Baltimore Monday December 26th Jacksonville Florida Wednesday December the 28th Detroit Michigan Friday December the 30th August the 1st excuse me January the 1st Atlanta Georgia again Monday Kwanzaa is Baltimore Wednesday, Kwanzaa, Jacksonville, Florida. Friday, Kwanzaa, Detroit, Michigan. Sunday, Kwanzaa, Atlanta, Georgia. Los Angeles, January the 7th. Durham, North Carolina, January the 17th, I think it is. Okay, so that's where we at. Tickets, go to my website, click on my Eventbrite link, or you can go straight to Eventbrite, princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com, princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com. Dot com. Okay. Y'all ready for the last five? We got five more to go. Here we go. Let me take a little sip. Y'all sister, somebody texted me and said I need to give out a Lucy Goosey award. <laughs> sister, y'all need to stop being so hard on each other. We ain't giving out no Lucy Goosey awards. Tanya, you said I'm digressing, Tanya. I'm digressing. Okay, Ty, I'm going to get back on. Y'all hard on me on Facebook Live. Okay. Number number six. Black man. Protect your personal and financial information from women while you're dating them until you've decided to make her your wife or your queen. Okay. Protect your financial information. I have heard horror stories about women saving men's social security numbers. Okay, they're banking information, so if the relationship doesn't go well, they will give that relationship to some of the boys in the hood who will destroy your credit, okay, or rob out your bank account. Protect your information. That include your children's information, their names, where they go to school, their birth certificate. If you don't already have one, you should have a safe in your house if you let women spend the night over. If you allow women to spend the night in your home, you need to have a safe where you lock up all your important financial papers because sisters are crafty and you know they have this, they have this. They will take pictures of your financial information, give it to your ex-wife, they will do all type, not all women, not all women. Most sisters are not like that. Most sisters are classy and honorable. I'm talking about the ones that are not classy and honorable. I know a lot of brothers can be very lax when you bring women to your home. You cannot be lax. Some women steal. I know a brother, the sister stole like $5,000 from him. She was a thief. Protect your assets. Protect your, your privacy when you let women into your house. Okay, now for me, in my position, I can't let women into my house. Okay, I don't allow women to come to my home where I sleep at because that would be insane. Okay. That's just insane. I cannot do that. I have too much important stuff laying around. Okay, it's just not going to happen. Okay, nobody come in there unless they have wifey status. You feel me? No woman comes into the home. Okay, not at this level. Not with who I am now and what I still must do. So brothers, protect your, your, your assets. Sisters, y'all ready? Stop taking relationship advice. Stop getting relationship advice. And stop asking for relationship advice from lonely, unhappy, dissatisfied, miserable black women. Why are sisters getting relationship advice from lonely ass black women? And with all due respect, this could be your mother. This could be your grandmother. This could be your best friend. It could be your favorite aunt. It could be the female minister at church. I don't give a damn who she is. If she is lonely, if she cannot stand black men, if she has been mistreated by men her whole life, you do not get advice from her. You only get advice 
from women who are in satisfying relationships with men. And if you don't know some, you better ask somebody to introduce you to some. I would rather you get advice from a happily married woman you don't even know. I would rather you get advice from a happily married woman that you don't even know before you get advice from an unhappily married woman who you absolutely love, adore, and are related to. Did you feel me on that, sisters? I don't understand. Why would you, you got a good man, y'all going through something, but you got a good man, and instead of going to a woman who has a good man, you got a good man, but y'all going through something. And instead of going to a woman who has a good man, you go to a woman who ain't got no man, or is dissatisfied with her man and going to ask her, should you stay in a relationship? Are you crazy? Do you not understand misery loves company? Misery loves company? Do you not understand it's so hard for sisters to get a good man because it ain't enough men around at all? Your cousin want him for herself. Your best friend want him for herself. I hate to say this. I hate to say it. But let's be honest. If a woman has to choose between a best friend and a husband, what you think she gonna choose? If a woman has to choose between a best friend and a husband, what do you think they gonna choose? The husband. You can live without a best friend. People live without best friends all the time. It is very difficult to live a lonely life with no companionship. It's a free fall in the hood right now. Cousins are stabbing each other in the back over the same man. You Come on, you don't go to no unhappy woman. Uh-uh. You got to be very careful who you get advice from. Stop that nut stuff. Number seven for the brothers. If you have a problem abusing black women, if you have a problem putting your hands on my sisters, your ass don't need to be dating. You need your neck broke. Too many black women are the victims of abusive men. Too many black women are being victimized and battered and abused and having their lives put in risk and in jeopardy from black men with domestic abuse problems that stem from childhood sex abuse, fatherlessness, neglect from their mother. Don't take that out on her. She ain't the one who molested you. She ain't the father who walked out on you. She ain't the mother who put her boyfriend before you. Go and get your ass some help. I'm tired of brothers beating on women. I'm tired of little kids coming to school and have to meet with me. Dr. Johnson, we have a young man that needs to see you. Last night, he, he overheard his mother being beat by her father, by his father. Dr. Johnson, we have a little third grade girl. She's been crying all morning. She saw the father punch the mother in the face. Can you give her some school counseling? The fuck wrong with y'all? That's why we need a ski mask club. That's exactly why we need a ski mask club. We need a group of brothers and sisters in every city in America and across the world because I'm a Pan-Africanist. So this goes from Africa. Shout out to my African brothers and sisters. Shout out. South Africa, I loved you. Kenya, I loved you. The Sutu, I loved you. Ghana, can't wait to see you again. Nigeria, can't wait to see you again. Egypt, can't wait to see you again. Ethiopia, can't wait to see you again. Liberia, can't wait to see you again. Senegal, can't wait to see you again. United Kingdom, I haven't forgotten you. London, I know I ain't been to London since 2014. I ain't been to London since 20, December of 2014. It's been three years, London. I got you in 2017. London, I got you in 2017. I love me some London. I love me some Birmingham. I love me some Luton. I love me some Wolverhampton. I love me some Bristol. The United Kingdom rides hard with the Prince. I will be there, all right? Toronto, I'm working on you right now, Toronto. Canada, I'm working on you right now. And tell Drake I got to holler at him 
for coming at my man Meek Millie, North Philly, 18th Street. We don't play that. So when I get to Toronto, me and Drake got to have a sit down. You understand? Because you disrespected my hood. Can't have that. All right? Can't have that. Okay? So that's how we living on that. Now, Ski Mask Club. We need that Ski Mask Club. If black men knew that you getting your ass whipped as soon as you walk out the house, there would be a lot less domestic. Do you know what? A, if it's 20 people outside dressed in black because the next door neighbor called the Ski Mask Hotline? 1-800, we going to get in that ass. And when you look out the door, you see 20 people ski masked up. Trust me, he going to keep his damn hands to himself. And black women, sisters, listen to me. If he hits you once, he going to hit you again. So I need y'all to stop putting up with these situations. And I'm going to call out the church and I'm going to call out the masjid on this. I got nothing but respect for the church. I got nothing but respect for the masjid. Haven't been raised in both, but a lot of you pastors and a lot of you imams, forgive my French. I'm not going to, y'all straight cowards. I ain't going to say what I was going to say. I was going to say a word that, you know, y'all cowards because a lot of these abusive men are well-educated financial contributors to the church and to the masjid and y'all not doing nothing about it. And we ain't got the shelters out here. We ain't got the shelters we need in the hood to take care of battered black women and battered black children. We ain't got the type of uh, institutions we need. So black women are not going to go to these white run shelters because they don't want to be treated like animals and looked down upon. And looked down upon. Okay? Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. See, a black woman suffers twice when she gets abused because on the one hand, she can't go nowhere for help, not even to the church of the mind, can't go to the white abuse shelter. And then on the other hand, she's not going to turn you in because you're the father of her children. And in most states, domestic abuse is a felony. In most states, domestic abuse is a felony. So if she turn you in, you get another strike on your record. And now you down three strikes and you out on some Bill Clinton shit or some state penal code shit. You feel me? Some criminal code stuff. So she ain't going to tell on you. And a lot of times sisters getting beat, they ain't got no family that care about them. They ain't got women around them that care and brothers around them that care. Because can't no man beat up on no woman when she got men who care about her in her life. So please, if you know that you got an abuse issue, brother, get some help. Call me. I will find you a psychologist. But you got to keep your hands to yourself because I'm getting tired of this shit. Okay? Our boys see the mothers get beat and now they beating on their girlfriends. Okay? Boys see their mothers get beat. Now they beating on their girlfriends. And then your daughter see the mom get beat. Now she letting boys beat on her. I see it in the high schools where the boys be manhandling the girl like family. You don't treat a woman like that. They learning this at home. They learning this from the house. You beating on that mother. Your great grandson might be beating on his woman because you introduced abuse culture into the family. Stop introducing abuse culture into the family. Abuse culture has no business in the family. No, 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 no. I speak on that. I don't do police. I don't like police. I don't trust police. But I'm going to say this. Y'all could quote me on this shit because I'm a man. I stands by mine. And I don't care what people think. You understand? That's what a man. I, I ain't worried about no public opinion. Okay. I didn't become king of the conscious community worrying about what people think. Okay. People rock with me because I'm going to call it as I see it. And I'm going to call it right now. If a woman has nobody she can call and she is being abused by a man, then yes, she should pick up the damn phone and call 911. Dr. Umar Johnson said it. Quote me, put it on a t-shirt, tweet that shit out. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. I say this shit again. If a man is beating a woman and she ain't got no brother she can call in that community to come and intervene, pick up the damn phone and dial those three unholy numbers to deal with his unholy ass. I said it and you can quote me. Talking about don't call the police and he damn near killing her. Don't call the police and the kids in there crying and watching their mom get beat down like a damn animal. 
Nah, call the fucking cops if you can, if you can't do nothing else. Now I know some of you sisters are saying, pick up the gun, but we got a problem with that. She pick up that gun, she take his life. She can't prove that her life was in jeopardy. She go to jail for the rest of her life. And that those kids is in adoptive homes, foster homes, being raped and molested, group homes. She can't do that. She cannot do that. Ladies, you cannot do that. Don't pick up that gun and blast him out. Your kids deserve better than that. You got to think about them babies. Leave. Walk the hell out. Leave. Don't You ain't got to pack. Just get out of there. You can come back for the stuff later. Just get on up out of there. But we're going to get that ski mask club jumping. Okay? Ladies. I know some of y'all are real good wife material. Some of you sisters are some of those old-fashioned good women. You cook for a man. You clean for a man. Sexually, you do whatever to please a man. But I'm going to tell you right now, we don't do European sex in the black community. Okay? So these threesomes and twosomes and belts and whips and all, we don't do all that. Okay? All this anal, anal stuff, that ain't us. Penis, vagina. Okay? Not ears and nose and ain't, we didn't do that. Okay? The point that I'm trying to make to my sisters, save some things for marriage. Never give a man too much before marriage that you will regret it if he walked out. Did you hear what I said? Anything you're about to do, ask yourself, if this man walks out of my life, will I regret having had done that? I know of three cases, three, of women who I know personally who did things sexually with men because he requested it and she wanted to please him. For two of them, it was a birthday gift. And I'll tell you, with these two women, they don't know each other though. These two women, the man wanted a threesome for his birthday. He wanted them to join another woman in the bed with him. Now, I don't do threesomes and twosomes and asomes. I'm old fashioned. I don't know what the hell y'all into. I'm old fashioned. No devices, no electronics. I don't know what y'all into, okay? But anyhow, they joined a man in bed with this threesome. The relationship ended for whatever reason. And they felt so guilty and hurt and shameful that they did something with him that should have never been done with any man as far as I'm concerned. But definitely should not have been done with anyone except for a husband. Ladies, stop letting men take you there. Most brothers don't do this anyway. Most of my brothers ain't into this anyway. But don't do nothing. Even with your cooking, you might have a certain recipe. And it's like you this recipe been in your family since your great grandma. Your great grandma came up with a recipe for sweet potato pie that don't nobody know. She gave it to your grandma. Grandma gave it to your mom. You got, he don't get that sweet potato recipe. He ain't earn it. That's for your husband. Because if you give out everything, when you finally get married, what do you have left? What do you have left? All your recipes you didn't gave up, every sexual uh, experience you didn't gave up, you got to leave something. I'm serious about that. Even when it comes to vacations, a lot of y'all like the vacation. Ain't nothing wrong. But guess what? Some places he don't go to. Your most sacred space in the Caribbean whether that's Ocho Rios or whether that's Grand Turk or whether that's Bermuda, you have a certain little island. You just love it right there. That's your spirit play. He don't go there. That's for your, huh? some of y'all done did so much with all these men. You ain't got shit left. When I get married, I'm going to be mad as shit. My wife, I'm going to say, what can you give me that you ain't never gave no man? Anything? No. What the hell I marry you for? You save nothing for your husband? Ladies, Stop going over and above the call of duty. Save some shit for later. Okay? You ain't in this for the short term. You in this for the long haul. You don't know if he going to be your man or not. Never do anything that you will regret. And do you know what these sisters would say? They would say, I hope he don't tell nobody what I did. 
I hope you don't tell nobody. For you to have to say that means you should have never done it. He tells somebody y'all had sex. So what? So what? But he tells somebody y'all had a threesome. Ah. So please save some stuff for latest. Okay. Number eight. We almost done. For the brothers. Don't let women you've dated in the past that you've had bad negative experiences with don't let them impact or influence your right to have a healthy relationship with another woman one thing about us brothers and brothers let's be honest about this we don't bounce back easy from emotional hurts with women women although they can be full of drama women bounce back better than us they do. When a man gets hurt by a woman, shit, he may never love again. A man gets hurt by a woman, he may never open up his heart again to another woman. Brothers, we got to get past that shit, not just for her, but for you, because you deserve better. Don't color her from what the last woman did. Don't do that. Your ex-wife might have put you through some shit, but she ain't her. Your first baby mom might have put you through some shit, but she ain't her. And if you keep going through the same situation, you got to ask yourself, what are you doing? What do you need to do different? Because at that point, it ain't about the women. It's because you're in a, you're stuck in a certain type of a pattern or you have a certain type of a karmic debt that needs to be paid. Because sometimes it can be a karmic debt. Sometimes it can be a karmic debt that got to be paid too. We got to understand that the spiritual represents that too. Because a lot of us, we good men, but... We don't let women love us and she can't hang around like that. Women got to have that emotional connection. That's them. You got to give it that or she going to feel like she's being cheated and she either going to leave you or cheat. In other words, what you fear may happen, you may cause to happen. Let me say that again. What a black man fears may happen in the relationship, you may actually cause it to happen by being so guarded that you neglect your emotional obligations to your queen and as a result she ends up doing exactly what you feared although she was not even thinking about that until you decided to cut your heart off from her all right brothers Loving is painful, black man. Loving is painful. Woo! Love can be painful. It can be risky business. But guess what? It's the only way to do it. It's like swimming, right? You could drown swimming. But the only way to swim is to put both feet in the water. You can't swim with one feet in the water, can you? What do you call it when you put one feet in the water? Can you call that swimming? No, that's kicking the water. In order to swim, you got to put your whole body in that pool. You got to take a chance of not being able to swim. Relationships and love is the same way. You cannot half step it. You are either in it or you are not. And the beauty is what though? Even though love, we all want the love. And even though getting the love can be painful and risky, is worth it in the end. Life without love ain't a life to live, black man. You deserve better. Give yourself another chance. Take your time. Find the right woman. But give yourself another chance, brother. A life without love ain't no life. Trust me. Love make the world go round. Garden your heart when you find a good woman ain't good. Because somebody else going to come around and be like, listen, I will love you, sister, the way you deserve to be loved. And she going to leave your ass. She ain't going to cheat either. She going to tell you. This contract is over. Take it back. She's going to say, here's your contract. I found a man who's going to love me back. Because your emotionally wounded ass, your wounded ass, you are draining me. You are an emotional vampire. So black man, you got to learn how to love, my brother. Don't, don't, don't starve her of that. Don't starve her of that. And don't starve yourself for that. We all been hurt. Lord knows we got our stories. You understand? But you got you got to get back out there, man. Love is that's God. That's why they say we can never be a man until we have a wife. God expects us to be with a queen. Take your time, don't rush. But make sure it's on your agenda. Find her. 
Okay? I'm on the reels for that. Okay? Number eight for the sisters. Number eight, never give a man all your power unless he's earned it. Learn how to take it back when you lose it. I talked about this earlier, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on number eight for the sisters. But remember what I said. You come into a relationship with a 50-50 balance of power, a 50-50 balance of power. And every time you display weakness, you give some of your power over to the man. Okay? A relationship works best when it's an equal balance. Everything works best with balance, right? So you got to never give away your power. If you got to argue at a man, yell at a man, shout at a man, threaten a man, scream at a man, cry with a man, you're giving away your power. What you crying for? You got power. Use it. What you begging for? You got power. Use it. You got the same amount of power I got. You have the relationship. I'm half the relationship. Why are you letting me dominate this damn relationship? This is supposed to be a partnership. A relationship is a partnership, not a dictatorship. A partnership, not a dictatorship. Take your power back. That's all I'm going to say to that. Number nine for the brothers. Number nine for the brothers. Make your woman feel secure. Do not flirt or stare at other women when you are with her. Brothers, we have to control our eyeballs. Eyeballs reflect intent and interest. Control your eyeballs. It is very disrespectful to be thirsting for other women while you're currently with a woman. That is very disrespectful. That is very disrespectful. Y'all at a restaurant and you eyeing another woman on the first date. Even if y'all married, you eye eyeing another woman while you with her. That's wrong. You look at another woman up and down. That's wrong. You flirting with another woman. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Make her feel special. So many black women have never been validated by their fathers. Either the father was not there, or the father was abusive, or the father was a pedophile, or whatever the case may be. A lot of sisters were never validated by their father. Validate her every time you're with her. Validate her. That's your queen. When another woman walks up, you should take her hand. When another woman walks up, you should take her hand. Especially if that other woman is attractive or more attractive. My baby look good too, but my baby don't look this good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to validate my baby by taking her hand and hold her hand. You ain't got to lift it up, but hold her hand. You're letting her know that I see how attractive she is, but I love you. I love you. Hold that hand. Validate her. Because women have those insecurities, especially our sisters who didn't have their dads in their life. Validate them. They insecurity be all over the place. Validate them. Baby, it's okay. Relax. I got it. At the restaurant, look in her eyes. Put that cell phone down. Stop taking phone calls. Do you realize that woman may have nobody in her life that gives her individualized attention? She may have no one in her life that gives her individualized attention. Some of us don't know, brothers, but it's so hard being a black mother, a single black mother, that when they get that one date a week, because some of them can only get out once a week because they don't trust leaving their kids with other people. So she get that one date a week and you it. You should feel honored. She gave that shit to you. Don't abuse it and don't disgrace it. Validate her. She should be able to walk home. She should be able to walk home after you drop her off and walk her to the door, okay? And she should be able to walk in that house and take a deep breath. <sighs> and say, I enjoyed myself tonight. I had a good time. That's what she should be able to say. She shouldn't have to walk in the house and say, that nigga stared at that girl with her big ass all night. She should not have to do that, black man. She should not have to do that, okay? Validate her. Give her your undivided attention. 
You bougie Negroes, that includes y'all too. Y'all want to stay on your little tablet and, excuse me, I need to take this. Excuse me, I need it with your skinny jeans and your tight ass turtleneck with your soft ass. Give her your undivided attention. Okay? Ladies. Ladies. If you have low self-esteem, you should not be dating. If a black woman has low self-esteem, she should not be dating. A woman with low self-esteem is at significant risk of being abused, cheated on, mistreated, taken advantage of, and straight up walked over like she's a piece of dirt. If you got low self-esteem, you better fix it. Black woman, you don't need to be dating nobody if you don't respect yourself yet. Until you got self-respect, you should not be dating, which is why I always say when I do my For Sisters Only lecture, and I have a For Sisters Only tour coming up, I'm going to do Boston, uh, I'm going to do New Orleans, I think I'm going to do uh, Chicago, I'm going to have to do Chicago and Detroit for the For Sisters Only tour, and then I'm going to hit some of these places I never hit like that much, like a Kansas City, a St. Louis a Nashville, Tennessee for my for sisters only tour. Okay. But I always say that if I could be blessed, if I could change one thing for all black women, if I could give all black women one thing, if I could give all black women one thing, it wouldn't be money. It wouldn't be a car. It wouldn't be a husband. It would be self-esteem through the roof. What I wish for my sisters is unlimited self-esteem. Any black woman in a dysfunctional relationship, any black woman in a dysfunctional relationship, I can pretty much promise you and guarantee you that self-esteem is at the foundation of why she's still in that miserable ass circumstance. I don't care if it's domestic abuse. I don't care if it's cheating. I don't care if it's a, 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 a man who ain't pulling his half of the job. Show me a woman who is in a legitimately dysfunctional relationship. I show you a woman with low self-esteem because a woman with self-respect would have left a long time ago. A woman with self-respect would have left a long time ago. And guess what, black woman? Guess what, ladies? You cannot hide the level of self-esteem you have from a man. Just like you can pick it up on us, we can pick it up on y'all. That one dinner date he saw, how low your self-esteem, you never made eye contact. Some of you sisters, you wear your hair all the way down here like Aaliyah, rest in peace to Aaliyah. Sisters who cover one eye and all that type of thing. Okay? That's, be, that's shame. Anytime a woman is covering her face that much, Okay, and I've only said Aaliyah because she covers her face a little bit. I can't remember whether Aaliyah covered it all. Okay, so we're going to leave her out of it because she's with the ancestors now. She's an ancestor. But when sisters cover their face like that so much where you only see like one eye, okay, it's because there's an insecurity about the way she looks. Okay, ladies, that's insecurity. That is insecurity. I can't even see your ass. You got a whole forest going on right here that's insecurity that's insecurity and let me tell you ladies a secret guess what is the most attractive thing guess what is the most attractive thing in a woman self-confidence is better than the biggest ass is better than the prettiest breasts is better than the nicest hips is better better than the prettiest smile is better than the silkiest skin is better than the best box of cookies you ever swam in in your life is better than the best plate of southern soul food the most attractive thing to a woman is self-confidence get some get some work on yourself before you start working on a relationship rebuild yourself before you start trying to build a future with somebody else rebuild yourself before you try to build a future with somebody else okay I'm going to tell you something else. Women who wear an excessive amount of makeup in security. I ain't talking about a little blush. I ain't talking about a little lipstick. I ain't talking about, I'm talking about when that shit is caked on like it's a cheesecake. 
she got a damn walking cheesecake on her damn face. That's insecurity. That's insecurity. You got the whole cake, like 10 inches of thick ass foundation. Can I give you another one? A woman who's always wearing provocative, seductive, and extremely tight clothing. Provocative, seductive, extremely tight clothing, insecurity. Do you know what that's telling me or any man? That's telling me that you have nothing inside of you that is worthy of value. That's telling a man that you have nothing inside of you that is worthy of value. The only thing that you value about yourself is your physical appearance. That's not good. When you wear tight, pr seductive, provocative clothing, you're telling me the only thing you value about yourself is a physical appearance. Self-confident women don't have to put their sexual attractiveness on display 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Women who value their minds and value their assets, things that they're bringing to the table, including personality and character, which is more important than education and income. I'm going to say it again. Personality and character is more important than education and income. I'm going to say it one more time. Personality and character is more important than education and income. So a woman who values what she's bringing to the table, she don't have to put her physicalities on display all day long. You are communicating insecurity. And do you know what's sad about that? Do you know what's sad about that? You ain't going to look that good your whole life. So what's going to happen when you've mid 50s? And it's hard for me to say that because black women be looking so good, even up. You know what I mean? In fact, I might got to get me a nice 49, 50 year old. Because y'all 40 year olds and y'all 30s, y'all. I got too much going on. I might meet me a nice. 47 to 52 ish. You know what I mean? Gotta make sure I don't catch a loosey goosey, but um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Forgive me for that. But ladies, stop showing off all your assets. All right. Now, back to the brothers. Self esteem. If you ain't got none, work on it, ladies. Self esteem. If you ain't got no self esteem, work on it. Brothers. When a woman does something you do not like, tell her to her face. Check her. Sometimes women need to be checked. Check them. Check them. I've had to do it. I've had to do it. I had to say, listen, you come to my lecture event, you sit your ass down, and you enjoy the lecture. Okay, don't be floating around here like you Mrs. Umar because I ain't chose you yet. This is my stage. This ain't your stage. This is mine. Sit your ass down. Enjoy the lecture. You start doing shit to bring attention to you. You cut because I don't need that. I'm the superstar. You're the supporting cast. Play your damn role. Sit down. Sometimes you got to check. Brothers, you got to check a woman. She's, she's yelling at you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't raise my voice at you. You will not raise your voice at me. Check them. Check them. Excuse me. With all due respect, every time I see your children, their clothes is dirty. Your daughter, her hair is never done. Why ain't that beautiful little girl never have her hair done? Check her. I've often had to check women for how they treat their mother. Oh, yeah. I've had to do that a couple times. In fact, I stopped dating two women from my past because they didn't respect their mom. Whoa. You do not talk to your mother like that at all. And you damn sure ain't going to talk to a queen mother in front of me and think your ass going to be going out with me. I don't play no disrespect to queen mothers. I don't play that shit. You will respect your mother or I will be done with your ass. Check her. 
Sometimes you got to check. Babe, that's a nice outfit. But we going to pick up report cards. That shit is inappropriate. Handle that. And you know what else I need black men to stop doing? You know what else I need black men to start doing? Stop the back and forth and shit. Use a man. Ain't no back and forth. Talk civilized. Y'all can have a back and forth conversation. But ain't no yelling. Tell her what you don't like. Tell her how you would like her to handle it. And then, if she don't, tell her what the consequences is if you don't. That's it. You ain't got to be yelling. Handle your shit like a boss. Handle that shit like a boss. Stop all this catty back and forth shit with these women. No, I don't like this. I don't like it. You're putting my business in the street. I don't get down like that. I'm a public personality. Keep your damn mouth shut. Next time, your ass is cut. I'm the superstar. You the supporting cast. Try to become a superstar on my back, and I'm going to straighten it, and your ass going to slide on down to the ground. Don't play yourself. Brothers, you got to check them sometimes. All right? That's right. Let her know you's a man. You will not disrespect me. Okay? You ain't got to check her in the moment. She might run into an old friend. And you could feel her cookie jar warming up for this dude. So you know they had a little past. That's cool. You're going gonna, you're gonna to do the same thing sometimes. Give her some space. But then they hugging all super tight. It's just a little inappropriate for you. Don't say nothing. Y'all get up to the house. Babe, what you just did was disrespectful. You don't ever hug another man who's not a relative like that. Okay? That was an insult to me. People was looking like, who's the man and who's the friend? Check them respectfully. You feel me, fellas? Handle your shit like a boss. She will respect you for that. We getting to the end. I hope this was helpful. Okay. Number 10. Ladies, are you ready for number 10? Let me go back for a minute. Because I'm very serious about men telling women what they don't like. I get emails from men occasionally. Okay. One of the main emails I get from men is when the woman's cookies don't smell fresh. And men are always say, Dr. Umar, my woman, I love her, I care about her, the sex is good. But her odor, her vaginal odor is not healthy. What should I do? Tell her, the fuck you mean? Tell her. If you don't tell her, it may get so bad that people outside begin to smell it. You don't want nobody smelling your woman, talking about your woman. Tell her, babe, and you ain't got to be rude or nothing, okay? You ain't got to say this shit smell like 10 dead bodies in the fridge. No. You say, babe, you got a little scent down there. I want you to go get that checked out from the doctor. All right? Just check it out. It's cool. We cool. I'm going to still make love to you. But you got a nice little scent down there that might be a sign that something ain't kosher. I need you to go handle that. Because I know men who are afraid to tell their woman that they got an odor, and they just sitting there dealing with that. No, tell her. Okay, it happens every once in a while. You know, they women. There's a lot going on up there. Just tell your queen. Go handle that. Okay? Remember, right. But tell her. Don't be afraid to tell your mom. Ladies, y'all ready? For number 10. Number 10, number 10, number 10. Don't let another woman cook for your man too much. Don't let another woman cook for your man too much. Because a woman's ashe is in everything she makes. A woman's essence is in everything she creates. A woman's power is in everything she manufactures. What are the two strongest cravings of a man? The two strongest cravings of a man is sex and hunger. And that's why the stomach and the genitalia are located in the same chakra area. 
Okay? Okay? If your man likes home-cooked food, you better learn how to make him some. You ain't got to cook every day because I don't think a woman should have to be a slave. I think three times a week is good enough for me. You understand? But if he like home-cooked food and you can't cook and you letting Janelle, who's single, with no babies, you letting Shante, Tamika, and Teresa and them cook that man's food and that woman's single and she cooking them greens and she putting her food foot in them greens she put a little bit of honey in them greens little turkey but and you like Shantae why you ain't make these greens this good when you cook for us your greens ain't never taste like this I've been eating your greens for 20 years but when you make the greens for my husband they got this special sauce and she laying a cookie trap she laying a cookie trap and she doing it good cause she doing it right from under your nose right in front of your face that's right. She did them candy yam. She put a little special extra in the candy yam. She put out a grandma pack, uh, uh, her, her grandma little sweet candy yam sauce. She hooked them ribs up and she hooked the ribs up and she, she let the ribs marinate. You say you never let the ribs marinate. Why are you letting the ribs marinate this time? Because she laying a man trap. And every man knows this. Every man knows this. Every man knows this. Even if you don't fall in love with a woman through her cooking, you will definitely develop an attraction and a desire for a woman through her cooking. Facts. Facts. Every man has developed an attraction for at least one woman over his lifetime that he wouldn't ordinarily date had it not been for her soul food. That's why they call it soul food. Because they put their soul in the food. And he eating that pineapple upside down cake. He eating those candy yams. Lemon meringue pie. Those pinto beans with the sauce. And she made everything from scratch. He been eating... One day he gonna say, wow, if her food tastes this good, if her food is this scrumptious, if her food is this delicious, damn, I wonder what them cookies be like. Curiosity. Curiosity. And then she start dressing a little bit better, looking a little bit better, right? under your nose and then one day you ain't home and she made some extra pineapple upside down cake and she say Leroy I made an extra pineapple upside down cake do you want one and Leroy say sure because y'all know that Christmas dinner coming up. And that Christmas dinner, don't let Leroy get that Christmas dinner. It's over. Eating cooked food from a married, from a single woman? Cooked food from a single woman? Christmas dinner? New Year's dinner? Leroy came home. And Leroy said, I'll take that extra pineapple upside down cake. Leroy went into that woman's house with her big hips, all shea buttered up with some of that frankincense oil from the Aki brothers. House smelling like bath and body work. She got the little water thing, little lights and stuff. And by the time you come home, guess what? Leroy got Shanae upside down. In the upside down cake. Because your dumbass let that woman lay a man trap with her cooking skills. Hallelujah. I say, love a woman who can cook. Good God Almighty. Okay. Number 11 for the brothers. I'm going to give y'all a bonus one for the night. Men get a bonus, women get a bonus. Number 11 for the men. 
And I hate to have to say this. I don't even want to say this. I don't even want to do this one. But I don't have a choice. Okay? But I got to say this shit because we live in the Obama era. Black man, if you like sleeping with other men, Black man, if you are bisexual, trisexual, metrosexual, promosexual, protosexual, whatever the hell you into that involves another man, that woman has a right to be informed about your alternative sexual lifestyle and she has a right to decide if she wants to participate in it i don't even want to have to say this shit but i do know that aids is the leading cause of death for middle-aged black women on the face of the earth and i know that the main method of transmission for my sisters who are contracting the AIDS virus. I didn't say HIV, I said AIDS because HIV don't cause AIDS. But the main route of transmission for sisters to get AIDS is bisexual, down low brothers. All right? Now, y'all know me. I don't support same-sex relationship, and I'm not here to talk about that on this video. But I'm simply here to say that if any of you brothers watching this are bisexual, Okay, you have sex with other men once in a while, temporarily. You like sodomizing men or fellatioing other men or being sodomized by other men or being fellatio by other men. I know it's to me, it's unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. I think it's, it's not shit crazy because we don't even do this as black people. But if that's what you went to, that woman got a right to know. And I take issue with the homosexual movement. I'm not going to fight with y'all tonight. I'm just saying. I take issue with the LBGT crusade because I haven't seen a single campaign. I haven't seen a single campaign from the black LBGT movement. A single campaign to bring awareness to the fact that so many bisexual black men are transmitting AIDS and other diseases to heterosexual black women. Where is the black LBGT movement when it comes to holding bisexual black men accountable for not being honest about their orientations with regard to the heterosexual sisters that they deal with. That's number one. The second campaign I've never seen from the black LBG2 community relates to the fact that y'all don't say nothing about pedophilia and child molestation. Most black boys molested or molested by men. But the LBGT black movement ain't said shit about black gay men who molest black boys. You don't say shit about black gay men who are having sex with heterosexual black women who are not aware that they are dealing with a man who's engaging in risky sexual behavior with another man that can lead to AIDS transmission. We know heterosexuals can get AIDS. We know that. But let's be honest. Who has the highest AIDS rate in America? Homosexual males. And y'all not doing nothing about it. So if you gay brother, because we're going to have to ski mask your ass. You're going to be on that same ski mask list you give one of my sisters some damn HIV. In fact, you might got to be ski masks for not being honest. I, I got to think about this a little more. You definitely get ski masks you give her AIDS. 
and she didn't know you was bisexual. But we might got to ski mash your ass for lying to her and, and dealing with other men too, because that shit ain't, and you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. You dealing with other men and you dealing with a woman and she don't know. Now, if you tell her and she decide to go along with it, that's your business. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm speaking purely for black women who would have made a different decision had they known that their partner was having sex with other men. That's, I'm not dealing with the one. Some of y'all, you got a woman, she know you're dealing with a dude, that's your business. I'm talking about there's a lot of sisters who ain't into black men who are gay. They don't want to have sex with men who have sex with men, and they have a right to know. I'm not saying I hate you. I'm not saying I want to kill you because y'all like distorting me. I've never said anything to advocate hurt or harm to LBGT. I love all black people. I love all black people unequivocally, but I don't agree with your lifestyle. And I take issue with a lot of y'all who are exposing black women to very serious disease by way of sex. And you're not telling her, you're not being transparent with her about the fact that you're dealing with men. Give them a choice. Give them a, that's all black women are saying to all of us black men. That's what black, give us a, tell me the shit you bring into the table and let me decide if I want to deal with it. Facts. Facts. And the last one for black women. This is number 11. We're going to wrap it up. I'm going to let y'all go to sleep. and I'm going to go to sleep and get ready for my lecture tomorrow in Elizabeth. Black woman, never, ever, ever discuss your relationship problems with your man, with your former man. Are you crazy? You don't discuss your husband with your baby daddy. You don't discuss your fiance with your boyfriend from high school. You don't do that. That is the ultimate disrespect to talk about the privacy of a man's relationship with you, with the man you used to be intimate with. And don't ever tell a man. Don't ever tell a man that your ex-husband is your best friend. Don't ever tell a man that your baby daddy is your best friend. Don't ever tell a man that your ex-boyfriend is your best friend. Don't you ever. Do you know what you're telling me? You mean to tell me that when you need a shoulder to cry on and we have issues, you're going to go cry on the shoulder of a man you used to sleep with? I'm just going to keep it gangster. Can I keep it gangster? Fellas, can I keep it gangster one time? I'm going to keep it gangster. Very few men, very few men, black, white, purple, or orange, but we talking about us, very few men lack the ability to get back in with a woman they had children with. Most men, they may have to put in a little work. They may have to do some manipulating. They may have to do some scheming. But most men who have ever planted a seed in a woman, not all, not all, but most men who have planted a seed in a woman's soil had children with that woman. Most men have the ability to strike again if he set his mind to it. So under no circumstances are you to discuss your relationship with the man from the past. Because discussing your relationship with the man from the past might lead to you once again giving him some of that ass. Discussing your relationship with a man from the past might lead to you giving up some of that ass. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So, in conclusion, and I don't know how long we've been going for. How long we've been going for, y'all? 30 minutes, an hour? I, I don't even know what Facebook Live lets you do. 
But again, I'm going to conclude and I'm going to do more of these relationship talks along with other things. Um, and I'm a little pissed off that the relationship talk get more views than the Tuesday morning call because some of y'all need to be helping y'all kids. But I'm going to get on your trifling asses later for that. But anyhow, tomorrow I will be speaking here in Elizabeth, New Jersey at the Mickey Walker Community Center, 860 Honor Street. You can get tickets at the door, 860-ANNA, 860 Honor Street. Mickey Walker Community Center doors open up at 2. Prince of Pan-Africanism speaks at 3. I will be talking about economics. Tomorrow's theme is economics. And then Sunday, I will be in Queens, New York, Jamaica, Queens, New York City at the Jamaica Performing Arts Center, the Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Both events, Saturday and Sunday, uh, is about is, is opening up at 2. Doors open up at 2. Program begins at 3 o'clock, okay? Doors open up at 2. Program begin at 3 o'clock. Tomorrow, Saturday, Economics. Sunday, Queens, Consciousness. Elizabeth Economics, Queens, Consciousness. Elizabeth Economics, Queens, Consciousness. If you need to buy tickets for Dr. Umar's upcoming Kwanzaa tour, as well as Los Angeles, and as well as Durham, North Carolina, you can go to princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com and get your tickets now. princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com and get your tickets now. Don't forget the Tuesday morning Black Parent Teleconference, Tuesday, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can call in and get answers to all of the information that you need immediately following this live feed. Immediately following this live feed, I will post the flyers for all of my upcoming lectures. So once I end this live feed, just look at the comment section. And of course, hating as people will be blocked forever. But look at the comment section and right at the top, you will see the flyers for all of the upcoming lectures. So my New Jersey people, hope to see y'all tomorrow. Queens people, hope to see you on Sunday. Okay, let's work our relationships out. Black man, let's do a better job of taking take care of our queens. Black women try to be a little bit more patient with the kings. Let us love up on our children, love up on our parents, love up on our elders, and let us love up on our community. One God, one aim, one destiny. Marcus Garvey, gangbangers, Pan-Africanism, a perish. See you tomorrow. I'm out.